congratulations on the Sundance deal. Thank you. That's that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Was that a surprise or has it been a negotiation for a long time? Yeah, well, we've been, um, yes, it has been going for um, some time. We just want to make sure that we do the best for the show. Um, and Sundance were the channel uh, who, who gave us everything that we felt we needed. So, yeah, very good. Obviously, on this show, the chemistry between two central characters is so uh, important. When, what was the kind of process of landing the role and then uh, working with Matthew on kind of building the chemistry? Did you have chemistry tests? How did that work? Yeah, um, so I was sent the script by my agents. Um, read it, fell in love with it, wanted to be part of the world. It was like, help me, how do I get this job? Um, so I actually met with Jane Trantor um, early... Like, gosh, when would it have been last June, maybe? And I thought she was such a, an intelligent woman and the way she broke down the world and the story and the character arc, it was just, it sounded so enticing and I wanted to be a part of it. So we decided that I would uh, jump into a chemistry read with Matthew Good, who was already cast. Um, I met him and from that moment we were just inseparable um, if you ask anyone on the set we were like brother and sister we had such a good camaraderie a really playful energy with each other and we just we had fun so that the chemistry just was already there straight off the bat and we were each other's teammates and that was important for a television show of the scale so for those that aren't familiar with the books could you describe what your character is yeah uh, I play Diana Bishop. She's a historian. She's an academic. She's very interested in alchemy and she's currently studying. Uh, she's a witch as well, but she is denying her heritage. She, she wants to be a normal person. She wants to live a normal life. And um, she's struggling against the fact that she does have powers and she is a witch. She wants to deny that part of herself. Uh, and then as the story unravels, uh, she's forced to really embrace who she is and become her authentic self, which is the most powerful witch around. And she falls for Matthew de Claremont and he helps to just, um, you know, help her to embrace who she is. And I, I love their dynamic. It's a dangerous dynamic. Um, interspecies relationships are strictly forbidden. So they end up going on this journey that's really scary and it can be dark at times, but it's romantic and passionate and adventurous and there's no other choice. They have to be together. Their love is so strong that they're drawn to each other. Were you familiar with the books before you took on the role? I wasn't actually. Um, I have three children and I haven't read books in a long time. So I think that I just missed I missed the boat on reading the books and then of course when the script landed on my on my doorstep I jumped into the books. Um, I actually did the audiobooks because I can drive and when the kids were asleep I put the audiobooks on because they weren't quite appropriate for my three year old. Um, so I would listen to the audiobooks and I loved it. Um, I, it was just this incredibly fantastical mythical world that I was enticed by and intrigued by and I wanted to know more. I love doing Warm Bodies and um, I was wondering, Matthew was cast first, and I, I love your character more, but I can see how that that type can, can fit into Diana so well. But like, what other characters um, for Matthew were interesting in like casting him as as Matthew? Um, did that happen? And also as well, like, did you look at their cast catalog and decide like, this is somebody who wants to cast Matthew? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I guess on the casting process, you always go with the body of work. It's coming forward, but I think in some respects more important is how um, how Teresa responded to the material itself, uh, because you really want someone to have that connection uh, and really just get under the skin of the character. And I think it was something that that Teresa really picked up on the fact that you know Diana is an academic at heart, um, but at the same time she's in complete denial of, of her, her riches and her, her, her power. Um, so it was something that we really wanted to make sure it felt authentic that Diana lived in that world and she felt like an authentic historian um, rather than um, someone who didn't quite buy into the world. People who um, 
do know the books and love the books, they really love the books. How are you feeling about kind of delivering on all that anticipation for people who have been waiting for an adaptation of these, these novels? I think was, I can't wait to see the response to it because I think we've been really, it's been really important to us to make sure that we work closely with Deb to make sure the series is as authentic to the world that she's created as possible. And I mean, as always with an adaptation, um, you're taking one medium and creating a new medium. Um, and with uh, a novel, you can use the first person narrator to set up um, and establish the world and set up the characters and the relationships. Whereas in um, in a television series, it's so dull to do it that way because it's just reported speech. So um, you, we, we then find uh, ourselves having some conversations with Deborah about uh, maybe bringing characters that were later in the book, bringing them a little bit earlier, so that we set up the world because it was important to set up the witches and the vampires and the demons. And when you're doing the magic scenes, how does that? How do you handle that? And so much of what we see about her in the book is her sense of smell and other things where she feels. How does that come across on screen? Yeah, it's really interesting because in the book, she's the narrator, so you're hearing through her voice, which you can't really do that in a television show. So it was quite interesting to figure out how do we explain the magic and her feelings without having narration. Um, I would get on the phone with Deb or even just over Instagram if she wasn't in town and I would ask her about specific scenes when it involved the magic because I think every reader when they hear you know, Diana performs Witchwind, they have an idea of how that might look and I just wanted to know how do you envision that Deb? How did you see it coming from her body? Was it just an organic thing? Did it just come out quite rapidly or did, does she work on it and it builds up. So it was quite technical, each and every one of the magic sequences. Um, there's a lot of stunt work involved. Um, I didn't have to do a ton of stunts. I did actually some of it with the Satu stuff later on in the, in the story um, when I'm take, captured by Satu. I, uh, we did a lot of wire work and a big green screen and that was really fun. But uh, Owen Teal was for the Witch Wind portion. They brought in massive fans and they put a huge fan on me and they put a huge fan on him um, these big industrial ones it's like almost jet engine yeah it was and her hair was flying around. I had tears streaming out of my eyes from the wind and then he was put on wires and sort of thrown back and it works really well so we used a lot of practical effects which I, I love because I've done a lot of things where there's so many CGI sequences but in our show I don't know I mean we've hardly got any CGI which is lovely I think it's also um, just going to go back to the magic itself with, with Owen for example in, in the stunt sequence it was one of the reasons we decided to build the Bodleian Library at the studio is that we have in Wales because uh, we had to have full control over that space so it meant that we built a replica of the library within the studio space uh, and just the detail I mean the, uh, James, uh, James North the production designer has done a phenomenal job um, and Deb knows like the library very it's well. It's an exact yeah. replica. Yeah. yeah. You, so you it's, wouldn't it's, know it's, And it's amazing just walking into the space and it's like, <laughs> Yeah. It was a pity to have to knock Take it down. It down. <laughs> Everyone was really sad about that. And same with the other beautiful set pieces too and the houses that we built. And there was just so much attention to detail. And I remember each and every one of us was like, can James fly over to America and do my house for me? Can he build a set for me? Yeah. And so, it was actually sad to say goodbye to some of the sets, but who knows? Hopefully, season two. It's going to come guess, back. Yeah, we, you know, we filmed the series, um, the majority of it in Wales. Um, and a lot of the interiors we just built in the studio. Um, but of course we go to Oxford and we film on location in Oxford. We go to Venice, um, we shot in upstate New York. So we you know, travelled the world really, but, um, but filming in the studio just gives us that control. That's really right. helpful. Um, to give a controlled environment to work with. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see anything from the second book or is this all concentrated on the first? Yeah. Oh, hey, what about the very last? I know that, uh, 
Um, no, you wouldn't see that. We won't see that. Okay. Okay. Spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. Yeah. Spoiler alert. We won't be seeing that. Our schedule, like their. We're developing at the moment. Okay, yeah, great. we're um, we had a writers' room, um, so we're well. Just this is also news to me, so this is exciting. There's a writers' room. It's all happening. Okay, great. So you have books. You have a very old book there. Is yeah, that this actual, is the actual uh, manuscript. The actual prop that's come all the way from the UK. I filmed with this. <laughs> this is. I'll show you the. So you open the clasps, and my scene is with wow. This clasp is. No, not opening. Um, so, yeah, it's quite beautiful. So my scene is with the alchemical child floating upside down in the vessel. Uh, and then there's the moment in the Bodleian Library where she's seeing all the words running over her hands through her body and she's, you know, running a light underneath the pages and she can see, you know, it's a palimpsest, so there's words upon words upon words. And then... She slams her hand down and she gets burnt by the alchemical child. So she has, and we had, you know, a scar on my hand for most of the series um, in the shape of the vessel, which was so interesting. And it was, it's such a, an amazing scene, actually. Um, but to just see the book for the first time was really exciting. And I'd spent a lot of time at Cardiff University looking at old books and handling 17th century books with Deborah and going over it with her and how to touch them and how to be with the clasps and how to flip the pages. I had to split the difference though because like in real life you take so much time looking at the bindings and the way it's but on TV the director was like faster, faster, come on, come on. <laughs> But it's also, I think, you know, Deb was so instrumental in helping us uh, come up with this book, so she was involved in the, the design and the look, and you know, down to the clasps um, and the thickness of the paper uh, and how translucent it is because of the still, you know, it's a palimpsest, which means the you know, paper was so rare in, in, in this time um, that they would literally just squeeze all the bits of paper together so they would wash off any ink that was there but what tended to happen was over time it would come back and you start to see things through the text so uh, we wanted to make sure that that was authentic to what's written in the book and also to reality and so we spent a lot of time can look at it. we'll put it here for anyone to look at so what have you learned about witchcraft that you didn't know before oh um goodness well it's it's very it's elemental I think um, you know she does she has witch wind abilities she has witch water she can time travel she's can light things on fire it feels boundless her powers and I think whenever I've looked at anything to do with witchcraft it feels like they're very specific the things that they can do but in terms of Diana she's the most powerful witch in the world um, she can do anything and that was quite surprising and exciting to delve into and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that further develops in the next series. Yeah, I think it's something that we um, want to be quite careful though in, in revealing with the audience because uh, we want to take the audience on the journey uh, of understanding um, Diana's relationship with magic and the fact that she's um, in denial of her powers. Uh, and she slowly begins to reconnect with them. So it's almost like a slow burn in some respects. Mm -hmm. But you do see the magic come up accidentally um, when she's. Which is quite big, endearing. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's, there's a big story there that will uh, play out for the audience uh, who are watching six and eight. It, it just goes to another level. Yeah. Will we see horseback riding on this? Yes. Yeah. We see, and you probably saw a little bit of it in the trailer. Um, it was great because I hadn't ridden horses. Since I was 12 and then I got to go we worked with um was it the Devil's Horsemen yeah. they did like Wonder Woman and all these amazing big films and they provided the horses for them so I we Matthew and I both did about six hours worth of horse riding just training and learning to be with the horse and then we had a day of filming with them where we got to canter and take them for a trot um and it's funny because then I wrapped the Discovery of Witches and then I went on to play a jockey in Ride Like a Girl directed by Rachel Griffin and so I jumped on a horse and I'm like, have you ridden recently? I was like, well, actually, I'm a discovery of witches. So it was, it was really helpful for me. 
I, I know it's projecting sort of far into the future, but is it very much the fixed plan that it will be three seasons, no plans to say branch out to original material and you beyond that? Possibly or... comics. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. We, we think it will be ongoing. I think that the relationship between Matthew and Diana, the chemistry, is incredible. Um, so yeah, watch this space. Okay. <laughs> Very cryptic. <laughs> Are we going to see the uh, scenes where she's in the house and they're getting ready to leave and it's Halloween and there's a special costume involved? Is that actually part of the, the show? I mean, I guess it's a spoiler, so we don't really want to, you know, talk too much about it. Yeah. Let me just say you won't be disappointed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, no, it's just, it's just with, with, the, with the audience. Yeah. It's just how much we want to reveal of that um, early on, because I think it's a treat, uh, and we want to see that. How tough was it to bring that book to life and, the, you know, and not lose what you, you, you can't lose, because there's people who love it so much? Can you ask that question again? Sorry, quite... I'm sorry. So yeah. you're bringing this book that people love so much to life. How tough oh, is yes. it to not lose specific things, but you know you have to fit it into well, your series? Tough because yeah. I think um, it, there is such a huge fan base for the show, um, and we want to be respectful to that audience um, because they are so invested in it. Um, um, and invariably there will be some changes but I mean we've worked so closely with Deb on it to make sure that um, she also feels that it will work for, for her audience because she knows them so well yeah. um, so we've been very very extremely careful she was our guiding line Deb and you know like she just said on the panel she was like Deb is not afraid, Deb loves this, so you just, I think we all just have to trust her and her vision and, and she'd be the first person to say, no, we need to keep this in here or oh, it's okay, we can adjust this in this way, but it feels pretty similar to me. Yeah, but there's, but there's little treats in there that I think we've slightly embellished uh, from, you know, so it's not a new character, it's a character that exists in the book, but we've just given that specific character a little bit Delved more story. further. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, with, with uh, in full discussion with them, of course, um, and I think the audience are going to go crazy when they see it. Yeah, we're very excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Salem aspect of it, did you look into like, the historical aspect of like, she's a proctor and a bishop, and you have to take care of two people, even though like, they're too Anything about that, like, did you go into um, I did a little bit of research, but because Diana's very much denying her history and her past, and I think um, I didn't want to delve too far into that sort of thing. She shut a lot of that part of her life out. So um, I do remember researching about Rebecca Bishop and the Salem witch trials, but then I kind of left. I did it at the very beginning of the process, and then I just left it be. Um, but now, since I've been really looking into it, it's, it's very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sweet. Thanks, guys.